pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed, made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque, Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, Pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, today we commemorate the Pope, St. Cornelius, and the Bishop, St. Cyprian, who, through their lives as shepherds in the Church, showed us the abundant love and forgiveness of Jesus, our eternal shepherd. And so to prepare ourselves to receive the unmeasurable graces of God in this Mass, let us first acknowledge our sins and humbly ask the Lord for His pardon and strength. Lord Jesus, you healed the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgave sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you gave yourself to heal us and bring us strength. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who gave Saints Cornelius and Cyprian to your people as diligent shepherds and valiant martyrs, Grant that through their intercession, we may be strengthened in faith and constancy and spend ourselves without reserve 
for the unity of the church. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, let no one have contempt for your youth, but set an example for those who believe in speech, conduct, love, faith, and, and purity. Until I arrive, attend to the reading, exhortation, and teaching. Do not neglect the gift you have which was conferred on you through the prophetic word, with the imposition of hands by the presbyterate. Be diligent in these matters, be absorbed in them, so that your progress may be evident to everyone. Attend to yourself and to your teaching. Persevere in both tasks, for by doing so, you will save both yourself and those who listen to you. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. How great are the works of the Lord. How great are the works of the Lord. The works of His hands are faithful and just. Sure are all His precepts. Reliable forever and ever, wrought in truth and equity. How great are the works of the Lord! He has sent deliverance to His people. He has ratified His covenant forever. Holy and awesome is His name. How great are the works of the Lord! The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Prudent are all who live by it. His praise endures forever. How great are the works of the Lord! The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. A certain Pharisee invited Jesus to dine with him, and he entered the Pharisee's house and reclined at table. Now there was a sinful woman in the city who learned that he was at table in the house of the Pharisee. Bringing an alabaster flask of ointment, she stood behind him at his feet, weeping, and began to bathe his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and anointed them with the ointment. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know who and what sort of woman this is who is touching him, that she is a sinner. Jesus said to him in reply, Simon, I have something to say to you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two people were in debt. To a certain creditor, one owed 500 days' wages and the other owed 50. Since they were unable to repay the debt, he forgave it for both. Which of them will love him more? Simon said in reply, 
the one, I suppose, whose larger debt was forgiven. He said to him, You have judged rightly. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? When I entered your house, you did not give me water for my feet, but she has bathed them with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but she has not ceased kissing my feet since the time I entered. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she anointed my feet with ointment. So I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven. Hence, she has shown great love. But the one to whom little is forgiven loves little. He said to her, Your sins are forgiven. The others at table said to themselves, Who is this who even forgives sins? But he said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, the gospel story today is about this episode of the life of Jesus when he forgave a sinful woman. And you can just imagine how sinful this woman was because it is like everyone knows her that she is sinful. She is a public sinner. Kaya siguro, alam ng mga tao ang kanyang kasalanan. Siguro, ganun na lang kalaki ang kanyang kasalanan at alam ng lahat ang nagawa niyang pagkakamali. But the Pharisees and the other visitors were wondering and they were perplexed how can Jesus love and forgive this woman? How can Jesus love and forgive such a public sinner? My dear brothers and sisters, the answer of Jesus in our gospel passage today is about measuring. Jesus was able to forgive the sinful woman because Jesus did not measure the value of that woman by her sins. Instead, the love and forgiveness of Jesus always abounds. The love and forgiveness of God is always overflowing. That is why Jesus was teaching the Pharisee that this God will forgive your debt, your sins, and God will not measure you according to the sins. God does not measure our value as persons. The love and forgiveness of God always abounds for us. Mga minamahal na kapatid, itinuturo po sa atin ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo ngayong umaga na ito na ang Diyos hindi sinusukat ang halaga natin sa Kanya bilang tao. Ah, ikaw, mas mahalaga ka kasi mas mabait ka. Ikaw, Kaunti lang ang halaga mo kasi ganito kabigat ang kasalanan mo. Hindi ganun mag-isip si Jesus. Para kay Jesus, ang kanyang pagmamahal, ang kanyang pagpapatawad ay laging nag-uumapaw para sa ating lahat. And God and Jesus also teaches us to do likewise. Let us stop measuring the value of persons. Because when we start 
measuring the value of persons, when we start measuring the value of our lives, then everything will seem always less. And we will give always less. Wag kang sukat ng sukat. Lagi mong sinusukat, lagi mong tinitimbang ang halaga ng tao sa iyo. Kapag sukat ka ng sukat ng buhay ng ibang tao at ng buhay mo, laging kulang. But when you start appreciating life in God's grace, then everything will always be abundant in God. My dear brothers and sisters, God does not measure our value. God's love and forgiveness is always beyond measure. That is why in the letter of St. Paul to Timothy in our first reading, he would remind the early Christians, he would remind the appointed leaders of the church to be always diligent, not to neglect the gift that you have, the gift that was conferred to you, but instead, attend always to the teaching, persevere in your tasks, be diligent in the matters of the Word of God. In short, do not count your work. Instead, Always give your everything because your love for the Word of God, your love for the church, your love for your brothers and sisters should not be measured. They should always abound. They should always overflow. We celebrate today Saints Cornelius and Cyprian. They are both leaders in the church. Cornelius was a pope. Cyprian was a bishop. And at that time, the two were asked about Christians who left the faith because of the Roman persecution. Not everyone were faithful. Not everyone offered their life. Many of them left the Christian faith because they were afraid to be killed and martyred. And so the bishops were asked, should we forgive the traitors of the faith? Should we accept them again to the church, those who have left Jesus? Some people at that time said they should not be forgiven. They should be excommunicated. These people are traitors to the faith, traitors to Jesus. But Cornelius and Cyprian were not just leaders. They were shepherds after the heart of Jesus. They did not measure the value of the person basing on their sins, but they valued the person according to the overflowing love and forgiveness of Jesus. And they allowed these people to be penitent, to ask for forgiveness, and come back to the church. My dear brothers and sisters, God does not measure our value. His love and forgiveness is always beyond measure is always overflowing. So let us also stop measuring our lives because when we measure always our value, then everything will always be less. But when we start appreciating our lives in God's grace, then everything will be abundant and overflowing. Amen.
placing our confidence in God the Father who shows loving mercy in His treatment of sinners, we make our prayer. And for every petition, let us say, Friend of sinners, grant us your peace. Friends of sinners, grant us your peace. The church leaders may carry on the work of Jesus in forgiving sins and binding up hearts that are broken. Let us pray to the Lord. Friend of sinners, grant us your peace. That a forgiving spirit may lead people in conflict to a peaceful negotiation. Let us pray to the Lord. Friend of sinners, grant us your peace. That we may be gentle and charitable in our opinion of others. And may we not condemn or reject others on account of their sins and shortcomings. Let us pray to the Lord. Friend of sinners, grant us your peace. That those who are sick and those who care for them may experience the healing presence of the Lord through a caring Christian community. Let us pray to the Lord. Friend of sinners, grant us your peace. That those who have passed from this life may be forgiven by Jesus, our Redeemer. Let us pray to the Lord. Friend of sinners, grant us your peace. Most merciful Father, our prayers come before you in the name of your Son, who loved us and sacrificed himself for our sake. He who is the forgiving Savior, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the offerings of your people in honor of the passion of your holy martyrs, saints cornelius and cyprian and may the gifts that gave them courage under persecution make us too steadfast in all trials through christ our lord amen the lord be with you and with your spirit lift up your hearts we lift them up to the lord let us give thanks to the lord our god it is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For the blood of your blessed martyrs, Cornelius and Cyprian, poured out like Christ to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works by which in our weakness you perfect your power 
and on the feeble, bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Cornelius and Cyprian, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art, who art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am, am not, not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion my Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Through these mysteries which we have received, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that by the example of the martyrs, Saints Cornelius and Cyprian, we may be strengthened with the fortitude of your Spirit to bear witness to the truth of the Gospel. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Panginoon, 